Assalamualaikum students. Welcome you all to the one more session for the early pass papers. Today we are starting with double two one zero one two May June two thousand twenty three. And uh, for question number one, it says output devices are used to output data from a computer. Circle three devices that are output devices. Okay, so actuator, yeah, it's a output device. So we are going to circle it out. DVD, no, it's not. It's a storage device. Keyboard, it's an input device. Microphone or mic, it's an input device. Once again, mouse is an input device. Printer is an output device. Scanners are the input devices. Sensors are the input devices. SSDs are the storage devices. Then speakers are finally again with the output devices. Now they are saying binary numbers can be converted to hexadecimal. Convert the two binary numbers to the hexadecimal format. Okay, now we need to convert these two binary numbers into the hexadecimal. How are we going to do this one? So the first one is given to us. We can first of all write in this particular manner. 1, 2, 4, 8 because it's a hexadecimal. So we will be uh, making the pairs over here. And we will be making the pairs of 4, 4 bits for each. So overall there are 8 bits. So we will be making 2 pairs. Again it's 1, 2, 4, 8. Now for the first pair it is given. One double zero one for the other one it's given double zero double one. So the answer for the first pair is gonna be nine and the other one is going to be three. Similarly, we are gonna do this again. Eight four two one. Again, it's eight four two one. Okay, now the bits were four times zero and it's double one zero one. So for four times zero, it will be a zero. For double one zero one, it is making up a 13. So we do represent 13 by a D. So we are going to write it down nine three over here in this one and zero D for the next part. Okay, now they are saying a value is stored as a binary number in a register zero and then it's one, two, three, four, one, zero, one, zero. A logical right shift of the three places is performed on the binary number. Okay, now it's being shifted three places to the right. So three places to the right means this zero is going to be one, two, and a three at this location. And the fourth location. And then continuing with the other stuff. So one, 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 and a one. Now these three bits will be lost. And at initials, we will be adding up the zeros over here because it's a logical shift if it might be the cyclic shift so these bits zero will be over here one at here and again a zero will be over here so we will be studying this in as levels about the cyclic shifting right now we are going to do with the logical shift now they are saying state one effect this logical shift has on the binary number so you may say original bits are lost if it would be on one place to the right so the number would have halved if it's one place on the left so number would have been doubled okay the other thing you can write it down because it's three places now so you may say that number has been divided by eight you may write it down as well number has been divided by eight okay now they are saying give two reasons why a programmer may use hexadecimal to represent the binary numbers okay so easy to understand by this by user easy to understand by user will consume less space in memory less space in memory and the third point you can write it down although we all uh, we just require two points but i'm giving the third point as well if you want to do that uh, will take less time for execution will take less time for execution 
Okay, now they are saying denary numbers can also be converted to the hexadecimal. Convert the denary number to the hexadecimal. Okay, now it's 301. Now, how are we going to convert 301 into the hexadecimal? So, it's quite simple. 301 will be LCM by 16. Okay, one method is this one. Other one, you can just convert 301 into the binary first of all, and then you can convert it back to the hexadecimal. That's fine as well. Completely depends on which one you are going to do. Okay. Now for 16, 301, how it's going to work. So 16 ones are 16. Remainder will be 14 over here. So now this becomes 141. Okay, now if I do say that what is the nearest value in the, in the table of 16, so we can check it out that 16 eights are, 16 eights are is 128. So eight over here, it's 128. Now what is the remainder that is left over here? So 141 minus 128 is the value that is left. So 11 minus eight, it's a three and uh, 13 minus 12, it's a one. So it will be 13 right over here. That's remainder. Okay, now 16 ones are 16 and remainder will be two. So how are we gonna write the answer? We are going to say from first of all, right to left, sorry, left to right, and then from bottom to top. So we will be writing the answer one, two, and instead of 13, we'll be writing the decimal, sorry, yeah, hexadecimal value of it. That's D. So the answer for 301 is 1, 2, D. Coming to the next question. For question number three, it says, when keys are pressed on the keyboard, the text is converted into the binary to be processed by the computer. Describe how the text is converted to the binary to be processed by the computer. Okay, now they are saying how it is converted. So you may say, you may say that the values are first of all converted into their ASCII or the Unicodes. Now, after converting it, each of the, those values are having their unique binary values that a system is going to process. So you may write it down. As the key is pressed, Each value or each letter you may say or each key will be fine as well. Each key will be will be having its unique as key value that will be converted. converted to binary so system can process that okay coming towards part b it says text that is input into a computer okay we do have a question i think so yeah, character could be fine as well. That's fine as well. Text that is input into a computer can be stored in a text file. A text file can be compressed using the lossless compression. State what effect this has on the file size. Okay, once it has been compressed, so what is the effect? So obviously the file, uh, you may say, uh, file size. So obviously it's going to reduce the file size. It will reduce the file size. Now they are saying describe how lossless compression compresses the text file. Okay, now they are talking about the lossless compression. So do remember that lossless compression is a part of an RLE as well, or you may say RLE is actually utilizing the lossless compression. It will only reduce the repeated characters or the phrases, and it will give it a particular number or how many times it has been occurred. 
So in this particular manner, you may say the lossless compression is actually working. So you may say. Lossless compression. Compression is utilizing. RLE run length encoding that reduces the file size by counting the repeated number of occurrences occurrences of similar data and stores them with their number. So this is how basically an RLE is working. Now they are saying give two reasons why the text file may have been compressed. Okay, so why it has been compressed. So obviously uh, if reducing the file size will save the storage as well as it will be reduced, uh, it will be making it faster to transmit. Okay, so you may say to save the storage capacity. To save the storage capacity. one thing the other thing you might say uh, easy or faster both the things you can write it down to transmit so these are the two things that you could say okay uh, and you may say the bandwidth will be reduced as well because obviously it will be taking less uh, time or less uh, data to transmit it from one end to another end okay now they are saying at question number four a student uses a mobile phone to take a photograph for a school project. The student needs to transmit the photograph to their computers. Sorry, to, the, to their computer. They could use serial data transmission or the parallel data transmission to transmit the photograph. Describe how the photographs would be transmitted using serial data transmission. Okay, now serial data transmission will be one bit at a time and a single wire will be utilized at a particular moment. So they are saying describe how the photograph would be transmitted using serial data transmission. So you could write it down in this particular manner. In serial data transmission, one bit will be transferred at a time down a single wire. Okay, now they are saying give two benefits of transmitting the photograph using serial data transmission. Okay, now obviously it is slow, but uh, you may say less chances of the, it's secure because it's less chance of the data corruption. Okay, and uh, you may say less chances of the crosstalk. And uh, transmission is adequate means that transmission will be 100% secure and it will be authenticated as well. Okay. So you may write it down. Transmission speed is adequate. one thing and uh, less chances of corruption. I state one benefit. Okay, I think so we do have a question. Yeah, that's fine as well. I state one benefit of the student using parallel data transmission instead of the serial data transmission. So obviously if you are utilizing 
the parallel transmission so it will be faster it will be quicker so you may you may see over here faster transmission of data faster transmission of data could be the answer now for part b the photographs are also transmitted across a network to cloud storage that means your drives a device on the network forwards the data towards its correct destination state the name of the device okay now how which device it is going to be transmitted to its correct location so there it's a router over here router will be doing so okay now they are saying describe what is meant by the cloud storage so cloud storage basically you may say the online collection of the servers where you are going to transmit the data and you can access that data remotely and it is comparatively more secured and yes you do require a good internet connection to access that data so you may write it down a collection of web servers or servers a collection of servers where data is stored remotely okay that's fine as well but i'm adding up uh, one or two points more okay to access the data you would require a good internet connection a good internet connection Okay, now they are saying give one disadvantage of storing the photographs in cloud storage instead of storing them locally. So as I just said that uh, you will be requiring uh, you will be requiring a good internet connection. One thing, one disadvantage, this could be the thing. Uh, the other one, it's uh, hackable. The other thing, it's a uh, third party can take the advantage of this after hacking. Okay, so these are few of the points. So the easiest one that you can write it down uh, give one disadvantage of storing so can be accessed by or you can say cannot be accessed without internet cannot be accessed without internet so this could be one of the disadvantage okay now coming towards question number five what does the question number five says a programmer writes a computer program using a high level language. Take one box to show which statement is correct about writing computer programs in a high level language. Mnemonics are used to create the instructions. No, it's not. Uh, because it's assembly language. The computer program is harder to debug than a low level language. No, low level language is more harder. The computer program is machine dependent, independent. Yeah, this is one. It's not the machine dependent. It's independent. Okay. Uh, the hardware of the computer can be directly manipulated. No, it's only done with the low level language. Okay, now they are saying the programmer uses a compiler to translate the computer program. Describe how the compiler translates the computer program. Okay, do remember that compiler is going to uh, take the entire program at once and it is going to convert that entire program to the low um, to the low level language at once the entire program will be converted to the low level language at once so you can write it down in this particular manner for this one compiler how many marks were there three okay compiles the whole program at once also creating an executable executable file of the code so no need for no need for compiler each time program 
needs to execute. Needs to execute. Okay, so for the other one, part two, they are saying, describe how the compiler reports the error. Okay, they are saying, uh, as we just told that compiler will be translating the entire program at once. So now they are saying that how it is going to report uh, that particular error. Uh, uh, report that particular error so it will be displaying it will display all error at oh, once first of all at once that require correction in a form of a, a report. So in the form of, a, of the report, not a document, yeah, but a report, it will be just telling you that what are the errors that you need to correct so that it can work properly. Okay, now coming to the next question. What does it say? It says the programmer uses an integrated development environment, that's an IDE to create the computer program one function of the IDE is that it has a built-in compiler. It state three other common functions of an IDE. So it do have a code editor, it do have the error diagnostics, it do have the auto correction, auto completion, pretty typing. There are multiple of them. Uh, these are given in the book as well. You can just check it out from there as well. So we can write it down. Number one, pretty typing. The other one could be the auto correction. Other one will be auto completion. Uh, these could be few of the things that could be utilized. Uh, ID, they are asking about the features of the ID. What are the features that what an IDE can do? So IDE can do multiple other things. It was written in your book, just in the software topic. Just after the compilers and the interpreters, it was written about the ID. That's an integrated development environment, a place where you are going to code the thing and what could be the good features of a code. So these are a few of the good features of the code that it should have a compiler. It should be uh, doing pretty typing. It should be doing with the auto correction. It should be doing the auto documentation as well. It should be doing with the auto completion as well. So as many features as an ID will be having, that means it will be as good as that, okay? Okay, now coming towards question number six. What does the question number six say? Part A, complete the statement about cookies. Use the terms from the list. Some of the terms in the list will not be used. Some terms may be used more than once. Okay, so we do have a compression, executable, HTML, HTTP, image, IP, persistent, session, sound, text, URL, web browser, and a web server. So they are saying cookies are small dash files. As we know that cookies are small, text files now this has been done okay some might not be used some might be used uh, twice uh, that are sent between a dash and a dash okay now the cookies are the text file that are sent between the web server and a web browser or you may write web browser and a web server both the things are right so i will be saying web server and a web browser Dash cookies are stored in memory and not in the computer's secondary storage. That means they are talking about the, uh, uh, they are not talking about the permanent cookies. They are talking about the volatile ones. So the volatile ones are the session cookies. So the session cookies are stored in the memory. When the uh, web browser is closed, dash cookie is lost. As we just said, session cookies are lost. Whereas a persistent cookie is not lost. So persistent cookie is not lost. Okay, now they are saying give three features of a cookie. So cookie is utilized to store the login details. It is utilized to uh, store the personal information of a person. It is utilized to track the preferences. Um, it is utilized to uh, 
to see the data that has been currently used or frequently used. It could be utilized to check the favorites as well. So multiple things it could do. Now we need to add three features. So you can say uh, store, storing personal details. And number two, you can say tracking user preferences. And uh, personal details are done, but login details you can say. Saving login details. Saving login details. Okay, so that was all for this session of the past paper, or you may say this phase of the past paper. We will be continuing for the next phase of the past paper. Thank you so much, guys.